In this AutoCAD tutorial, I want to cover the basics of using the loft command. So if we look on our home tab, we've covered extrude, and now below that we have loft. Now what loft does is put either a solid or a surface um, that connects between different cross sections, so you can really create some very unique um, organic types of shapes uh, pretty easily with the loft tool. What I'm going to do is just start in the top view and create a couple of very simple shapes that we can demonstrate this tool with. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab my polyline and I'll make a rectangle in the top view. So I'm just going to come up, maybe I'll do um, 36 inches by 24 inches. All right, and then I'm going to put, you know, maybe a circle inside of that. So let's grab my circle tool, and then, you know, I'm just going to come inside and draw, you know, a circle, maybe like that over here, and then I'll do one more, maybe over here, so I get something, maybe like that. So these are all flat on the ground right now. If I activate my southwest isometric viewport and then pan over, I can see that, you know, in fact, those are laying on the ground. What I can then do is actually just move these vertically. There's other ways to, um, you know, change the height of these, but for now, you know, that'll work just fine, keeping it simple. So I'm just going to use my move tool. Just select that circle and hit enter. And then I'm going to grab it, you know, either from the center or quadrant point with my object snaps. And I'm moving it straight up. And that's a real benefit of having ortho on, is that it's really easy to move straight up. And you can see that on my screen I have the plus Z, so I'm going straight up the Z axis. And I could say I'd like that to move up maybe, um, let's see, 24 inches. Okay, so kind of back up. And notice that in my top view, it looks exactly the same because I didn't move it, you know, left or right or anything, just straight up. And having these multiple viewports is a great way to check for that. You know, if that circle had gone, you know, shooting off in one direction or another, I would know I had done something wrong. And then I'm going to come back over to my isometric view. I will move, select this little circle, grab it from the center point, and also move that one straight up, maybe 48 inches. So I get something, you know, that looks like this if I orbit around. So these are now going, you know, straight up in the air. Okay. Just switch that back to my isometric view. Okay. And I really recommend that, you know, as you're working, Unless you really have to be in a custom view for some reason, it tends to be best to keep it in an isometric view. Um, you have a better idea of where you're at in the AutoCAD universe, if you will. Okay, so once we have some cross sections created and they're going either up or down in space in the way that we like, you know, and I could be scooting these around, but I want to keep it, uh, you know, fairly simple. We're going to come in and grab loft. Now, the important thing with loft is that you select the cross sections in order. So I can either go top down or bottom up, but I don't want to start in the middle. So I'll just select, you know, my top circle, then the second one, and you'll see that it's starting to give me an ID here and connect them. And I happen to be in conceptual, so it's giving me an idea of what that's looking like. Once I have it, I can hit enter. And I can either just choose to accept this, you know, or I can go in and actually change the settings. Okay, so if I type in S at this point and enter, as you see down in the command line, you do have the option to come in here and make some changes. You know, and very simply, if I were to pick ruled, do you see how it changes and it's very sharp? And then if we do smooth fit, it actually does a nice smooth transition from this first cross section, which is a small circle, to the next larger size one, and then down to that rectangle. You can also change it to normal to, for example, um, which will change how it reacts with each cross section, and if you're doing it with all of them, for example, the beginning the end and so on. So you actually have a lot of options here in terms of how this is going to change, uh, you know, changing different draft angles, the beginning, the end, the magnitude. So you can see that you can actually do a lot of customization here. Uh, what I want to do is maybe just keep it simple. I'll just do a smooth fit. 
and then um, I'm going to say OK. And now I've created a 3D solid using loft that's a much more interesting shape than I would have been able to make with, um, you know, extrude or something like that. And if I spin around, you'll see that, uh, you know, I'm getting something pretty unique here. And once again, I'm looking at that in conceptual view. If I were to change that to, um, you know, wireframe, for example, I get something that uh, looks like that. So that's the basics of how you use loft with cross sections.